polyvisualizer.com. So here, okay, you got here in your browser, and you're going through this page. Okay, you can do a lot of analysis. We're going to use this uh, website for other analysis and future assignments on your portfolio. So this, uh, that the advantage of this um, uh, website is that we have a, 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 a huge reduction on the time of preparing all analysis, all, statistic, all statistical analysis, correct? So here, Portfolio Visualizer, so we are going to the backtest portfolio part and we click here on backtest portfolio, okay. backtest portfolio. We are going to get this, uh, in this page, we are going to prepare our analysis, right? So, the only, if you don't care about this, so the time period, this analysis will be in an annual base, that's the reason why I have year to year. So, we don't strategies, I'm going to explain what this uh, means. We are going to include a uh, year to date, so I want data until the most recent period, it's going to be end of August 2020. I'm going just to, in the initial amount of my equity, I'm going to, to put an standard number, 100,000. You can put as well 1 million, it doesn't matter, okay, for our analysis. So there is no, so you don't care about cash flows, don't care about rebalancing. So this uh, website will rebalance annually the weights of your uh, stock in your portfolio to keep the same weight the same capital location on the stocks year after year we are going to put display come put yes so i want to see how much was how much i could expect to receive in terms of dividends if my stocks pay dividends what's not the case for all stocks i'm going to include my benchmark so i'm going to use the s p 500 represented by the vanguard 500 index invest and here, okay, you can you can customize with your name. So I'm put my name here. All right. So in this case, now I am going to populate the symbol ticker ticker with my stocks I have in stock track. So name Procter and Gamble, ATT, Visa, Apple. And scrap. Right. <clears throat> I'm going to I'm because I'm using just one uh, portfolio, so I'm going. You, you don't you don't care about these other three columns. This is going to test all the different allocations. We are going to assume in the way we're doing stock track that we have the same allocation for every stock, even though we know that we are not full invested. Don't have 100 percent. But doesn't matter. What I want to know in this uh, analysis is how this. If if I had my my entire equity allocate allocated in these five stocks, how much should be the compound on the return? The standard deviation, which is of these returns, which what is a measure of risk, and finally the sharp ratio uh, that measures the excess of return divided by the standard deviation. So here, when I get here, I'm going to click here on, on Analyze Portfolios, and I will get this information. So my information is starting January 2016. Why starting January 2016? Because I have one of my stocks went IPO on December, so I don't have more historical. So the web, the, uh, this website is going to, to take the analysis since the moment I have a square. With square with the other stocks right so five years is enough okay to have uh, to have uh, an analysis of a portfolio if you had a stock like zoom right put it here zoom here if you had a stock like zoom let's go run again if you have a stock like zoom you, you see we don't have many historical because zoom okay went IPO in 2019 so in this and this software start to analyze the next year, the next complete year. So we've got from January 2020 of August. So this analysis is not consistent to find out the levels of return and risk. So if you have a stock like Zoom, we stock that was IPO in 2019, 2018, 2017. Okay, what I do, I remove this, okay, for my list. 
I go only with five stocks and I give you again equal weight, correct? So pay attention if you have results at least, I would, I would say it's at least three to four years, right? So we move this stock to get an idea about a higher or a longer period of time of historical data to analyze your returns and risk. Okay, I'm going to go back to my I'm going to click. I'm going to review. I'm, I'm going to. Look at this. When I got this, I have information since 1986. So I have my, all these stocks, they exist for a long period of time, right? But I'm not going to do this, so I'm going to keep my square. So five years is enough. So I need to do equal weight, right? equal weight. I'm going to analyze again. So I have my five stocks, equal weight of each one, make 100% of location. So I have five years of uh, historical data. It's enough, okay, to do. Do you have an idea about the return of risk? So here, the information that's, that the uh, software gives to me is my initial balance, the final balance after five years and a half, all right? The uh, cumulative annual growth rate, or its compound rate of return in this portfolio. The standard deviation, which is the risk, okay? The best year, what was the best year since 2016? What it was the worst year? And what was the max drawdown? Remember the drawdown are this difference between peaks and throws. What what was this give to me? The risk, this is the volatility along the way, correct? And finally, what I'm looking for uh, the sharp ratio, which is the excess of return, the risk to premium of my portfolio in these five years, divided by the standard, the standard deviation, all right? And I get all this information for the, my benchmark. So what I can see here first, First of all, is that my portfolio, my equity, increased from January 2016 until now. If I had this, if I had invested in this portfolio five years ago, so in five years, the, my final equity would increase by three times, right? By three times, so it's uh, from 100,000 to 300,000. Why you the Vanguard or why the S&P increased by less than two times. So I would obtain a higher return in my portfolio than my benchmark. So this is good, okay? This is pressed by the uh, compound return. So this portfolio brings a 26.7% per year in return compared to 14.4% on the S&P. But with a higher risk uh, than the S&P. Uh, some division showing the risk. What was the best year of a portfolio? My best year since 2016 was 40 compared to 31 for Vanguard. And the worst year is it was also in a positive. So I didn't see any negative year compared to the S&P that we had one negative year. We're going to see which year was this one, okay? Uh, the portfolio brings a, a higher drawdown risk and this, if you put, if you point your mouse on this information, so the period was on from eight, October 18 until December 18. And this you can see here on the equity curve, okay? So it started decreasing, okay, until December 2018. That was the worst drawdown in the market. And the worst drawdown in the S&P, in fact, was the most recent one. Okay, from January 2020 until March. So on February, on January until March. So that was the worst drawdown in the S&P. Even though I got a drawdown as well, but this drawdown was not worse than this one, right? So that's the risk you can face during the time you were holding this portfolio, right? And the good thing is the portfolio delivers a 20% higher sharp ratio than the S&P. That's what I want, right? Forget for the moment about certain ratio and 
correlation. We are going to learn about these two, uh, two information later on on this course. The other information I got from my uh, on portfolio visualizer is the equity curve. Uh, this is the my equity, how my equity in blue is progressing comparing to the S&P in, in the same period. So I can see that my my equity is always outperforming the S&P, is always above, no? I get always a higher equity compared to the S&P. To the S&P. This is good as well. Okay. And if I scroll down, I get the annual returns year after year. So what you can see is constantly this portfolio, the combination of this six stocks in my portfolio, okay, brought a higher return compared to I know a higher return compared to the S P in red. So you see 30, 35 versus 21, 3% versus minus 4.5, 40% versus 31.33. By the way, 2019 was the best year for both. Huh? You see here, huh? that was the best year for both for, the, for both uh, portfolios. So my por my por this my portfolio was uh, outperforming the S&P in this year. And this year, clearly in 2020, is a huge performance compared to S&P. 30, so far, 35% versus 9.5%. That is what I want you now as a portfolio manager to beat the S&P. If I can do this in a constant way, it's even better, right? And, and finally, we have two, uh, the two final informations that are relevant for you. The first one is the trailing returns. What do you mean the trailing return, return? I'm going to see what happens in the past. In the, in the old period, I'm testing my portfolio, it's a full period, which means from January 2006 until August 2020. Right? And I'm going to get the past three years, what happens in terms of return the past one year and year today, and the most recent quarter? What you can see is the portfolio is constantly okay bringing higher returns and annual base and in the group of years, uh, three years, five years. If your portfolio has a higher period of backtest, if for example some portfolios can get from 2005 until now, okay. So you'll get, you're going to get different trailing returns with five years and 10 years as well, right? So look at this to see how your portfolio is outperforming uh, the, the S&P. And finally, we got here the portfolio income, which means how much income paid by dividends you get year after year, uh, $4,000, $5,000 in 2019, and 3800 $800 on 2020. So in my portfolio, it's not too much. No? Since this is, if I take 2020, or let's even take in 2019, 5,000, okay, 5,000 in 2019. Let's go here. 5,000 over 202, $220,000 uh, makes a 2% of dividends. Okay. It's not too much, but it's okay. So this always comes to contribute to my to my returns. If I want to calculate how much was the profit accumulated, I take the final balance minus the initial balance, okay, and divide by initial balance and multiply by 100. This is what we, we learn in class. In class, is the holding period of return. All right. So please do this, okay. And this will be uh, this will be your assignment. So how what you're going to do for from uh, for your assignment from here? So first of all, what you're going to do is to copy and paste. Okay, we copy and paste this page. Okay, I copy and paste this page. Okay. And this page here. Let's see if I can find this here. So when you copy and paste, we are going to copy and paste in a word, in a word document, right? We are going to do the same here. Okay, you're going to cop copy and paste this page, this page here, right? And put in a word document. And finally, 
I'm going to call and paste this page here and put my Word document. Right? A pre three three page annual Word document. And what I'm going to do is just to ask you three or four simple questions that you're going to strike from this for your uh, next assignment on the stock trial. Okay, so uh, this will be a post on the Word Classroom assignment. So this assignment should be sent uh, by this weekend. Right? They send until uh, Sunday Sunday uh, evening. All this will be precise on the Word Class uh, Classroom. Okay, thank you. Bye bye.